Whoa! What's happening? Oh, I decided to start doing karate. Uh, okay, but who's this guy? Oh, that's a master I found. Why is he here? Why wouldn't he be here? Karate is everywhere. He's gonna break everything. Brian, part of karate is learning to let go of material possessions. Are you sure he's not just some random homeless person? He's a wandering master. He doesn't need a home. He has peace. I don't think this is karate. You're missing the big understanding. Karate is a journey, not an end. He's making a mess of everything. Karate is all around us. Well, we have a new Jagged Edge Productions movie to watch. I think it's their attempt to capitalize on Five Nights at Freddy's. Cool, let's do it. Is... is he gonna be here? The whole time? I don't know. Okay. Well, that was... something. I feel like they're making less and less effort to pull off actual movies. Their lighting budget seems to have improved. Well, maybe they'll invest in some microphones next. Or some speech lessons for certain actors. Ablation. So we start with our favorite OnlyFans girl having a night out with England's most desirable bachelor. Todd. His name is Todd. He has a ponytail. It's greasy. He takes her into an alley. While suspiciously looking around. Then down some stairs. Then down a ladder. Into a dank basement dungeon. She says she's been in worse places. And I believe her. There are candles lit and a creepy book. There's always a book. That's completely not a ripoff of the Necronomicon from Evil Dead. It's made from skin and has this creepy eyeball that blinks on the cover. No one ever acknowledges the fact that the book blinks. He forces her to read some Latin and then she's killed by a bunch of costumes from other movies. Humpty and the Clown are back from Curse of Humpty Dumpty, as well as a few others from some blockbuster Jagged Edge films. The main one is named Freddy. He looks like a sad bunny, but I'm not sure what he's supposed to be. He's supposed to be a demon named Frederick that they call Freddy, because they're chummy with the dark forces of evil. So she dies, and we cut to... Giant Blonde Lady! She's a detective! She wears suspenders with a belt. I think that's supposed to be a holster, but these movies are made by fourth graders, so you have to squint really hard and use your imagination. She gets involved because the madam of an escort service or something asks her to investigate some disappearances. And she agrees. She immediately goes home and tells her boyfriend. Who's what, 14 years old? According to his agency, the actor can play a 20 to 30 year old. And in case you were wondering, he is muscular. She lives with a roommate and her boyfriend is upset she's going to investigate the disappearances. You mean he's upset she's going to do her job? Yes, but she needs some help from her roommate who's an influencer on Instagram, who's really upset that the child boyfriend doesn't like any of her posts, like she's one like away from total global fame. During their investigation in their pajamas from their couch, they figure out the giant blonde detective needs to go to some kinky underground club. As it turns out, the roommate has a membership. On her. In her bra. On the couch. The club is named Clarabelle's. Like it was started in 1908 by my great-grandmother. Can you do something with him before he spreads karate all over my desk? Here, I'll put a movie on for him. How about a Blue Ridge Mountain Christmas? Okay, he has a juice box in my iPad. So, Detective Blonde Lady gets all dolled up and goes to Club Lucy Sue's to do some investigating and finds Todd taking another victim on a tour through London or wherever they are. She uses her police skills to follow them in the most Scooby-Doo way ever. Once again, dungeon, book, girl is killed, but this time the detective is at the scene where she finds a giant bloodstain, but no body. So she steals the creepy book and takes it back to... Headquarters? Nope, her apartment, where muscular child boyfriend is still upset she's being a detective. You know who else is upset she's being a detective? Her captain. Girls are disappearing? So what? Happens all the time. Your detective saw bloodstains? Forget about it. It's all up to giant blonde lady now. Boyfriend reads out of book. Guys. Detective lady is really upset. Cry, cry, cry. Has breakdown. She's over it. So it's back to Club Mary Jo's to trap Todd. I hate Todd's face. So she gets with Todd at Club Gertrude and it's back to the hole in the ground where he discovers the book is gone. 
but the candles are still lit. She gets sassy, and Todd isn't having it. She acts really surprised when Todd gets sassy back. She did not plan this out. Also, her roommate gets killed during all this because she read the book. Todd tells Blonde to say the words he's memorized, but Todd is a moron. He doesn't realize that he's saying the words first. So Freddy comes to kill him. For a crappy movie ripoff, this sure does take a lot of effort to explain. We can't fault her now. She goes home to find the roommate dead. Roommate has scribbled some stuff in the book that tips the detective off to how Freddy can be killed. So what we're saying is the only person in this movie that did detective work wasn't the detective. It was the Instagram influencer chick. Yes. Let's wrap this up. Blonde Chick and Police Chief figure that the demons are able to be killed when they materialize for reasons. They have a big fight. They win. Until we see Freddy wake up two weeks later, ready to film the sequel during Jagged Edge's next lunch break. I think your master finished the Hallmark movie. It's time to practice my stances anyway. Your what? Roll credits! Hey Siege, I see you're still doing karate. Shh. Oh, sorry. Shh. I'm making my karate great. Like, right now? With my heart. Your heart is what makes it great. Okay, but we need to watch another movie. <sighs> Fine, I can be great later. Now you're talking. Hey, where's your karate master guy? Oh, I'm a master now. You're a master? Check out my belt. What is happening? Karate happened, Brian. Karate happened. Well, since you're into karate now, maybe we should watch a martial arts movie. Karate cannot be contained within a movie. But yes, let's watch a karate movie. Oh my. So, that was karate? That was ninja cheerleaders, not karate. But if karate is everywhere, it was in this movie. Do you want to talk about it? Well, first ninjas don't do karate. They, do they punch people? Sometimes. Karate. Karate is more than just punching people. Does it involve cheering other people on? Yes. Ninja Cheerleaders is a karate movie. These are your people. The girls in this movie are horrible people. Let's start at the beginning. Three high school girls in their mid to late 20s are also ninja warriors. And strippers. And strippers, under the tutelage of Mr. Sulu himself. They steal a mystical katana from an army base, and Mr. Sulu is very proud of them. We then cut to school where their teacher is apparently, um, what is the word for when a guy is fumbling over a pretty girl? Idiot. He's an idiot. And every teacher is super into these three girls. In their defense, these girls are almost their age. So after school, they are working to save money to attend an Ivy League school by stripping at Mr. Sulu's side hustle, which is apparently using high school girls to entertain middle-aged men late into the night. Oh my, my, my. Remember, these are the good guys. Their ultimate objective is to win the strip off to pay for their education at Brown University because community college is for suckers. They're also cheerleaders, as stated in the title, but this really doesn't mean anything, and it goes absolutely nowhere. Along the way, they beat up a group of sailors in the parking lot of Mr. Sulu's Strip Palace, where we discover that the brunette of our trailer park, Charlie's Angels, loves to crush dude's balls. Sorry! Is this what you were gonna hurt me with? I'm sorry. I have tiny balls. Say it. I have tiny balls. Say it like you mean it. Tiny balls. So cool. Like they do in karate. We don't train this in karate. I thought everything was karate. You think I can crush it? No. Hey. Huh. I think I made it pop. Me. Everything. There's a lot in this movie we didn't cover in my karate training. Did you learn how to use a garden hose to get a mobster to talk? by threatening to shove it with the wide end of Anyway, they discovered that Mr. Sulu has been kidnapped by the mob. I think they want the magical katana. So they immediately go to the strip off. We're getting ahead of ourselves. First they go home and bully some poor guy into buying Girl Scout cookies. Because they are horrible people. They also randomly punch some poor lady in the face because she's with the mob guy. Then they gleefully threaten to torture some guy right after a fight to get information. They're really happy thinking about that. Karate? You didn't mention that in this fight we are introduced to Kenji who always talks in the third person. And does Kenji think she's gonna kill all three of us with that one bolt? 
Kenji thinks that the three of you will soon be dead. And is being used by the mob to hunt down the ninja cheerleaders. I would say she's the big bad boss level fight person, but everyone is bad in this movie. They win the strip off, even without stripping. They just meander pole to pole. Like, guess they used karate. Mr. Sulu has been tied to a chair this whole time. But when the plot needs it, he just gets up. You mutt, you putz. <laughs> Wait, he came from behind him? Then there's a big battle and Mr. Sulu wins. And then three girls go to college. Karate is awesome. <sighs> I feel like I've been misled about karate. Maybe, maybe karate is really just punching people. Well, you tried something new. That's something. I guess so. Well, at least I'll have more free time now that I'm not practicing stances six hours a day. Yeah, that would free up a lot of time. I'll just focus on NFTs now. Wait, that's not- Roll credits! Hey, Brian, you want to help me finish off these candy canes I got last Christmas? Sure. Ow! What's wrong? Mm, I think I might have a cavity. But I really hate going to the dentist. Well, maybe there's a natural way to fix a cavity? Let's see. Cavity, natural, remedies. Oh, here we go. Looks like you can heal a cavity by going on a strict string cheese diet. Really? This guy has before and after pictures. His kid's tooth healed right up. Man, dental science is such a scam. Well, I'd try it, but I'm kind of broke at the moment, and cheese is, like, really expensive. Well, we can see if there's a way to just pull it. I'll try anything once. Here, we found a video that looks like it might help. At least, it can't hurt to see what it has to say. Okay, let's give it a look. I don't know if that's going to help us. This movie made me not want to have any teeth at all. Or friends. And I'm really confused. Do I have dementia? You don't have dementia. I think we accidentally watched a sequel to a crappy Tooth Fairy horror movie put out by the same distribution company that puts out Jagged Edge production movies. Oh, that's why Nose Job Chick was in it. So we get a scene at the beginning where a kid is challenged through a text message to summon the demonic Tooth Fairy, as children often do. Everyone dies and we get a title in some 2003 era sci-fi channel font. It doesn't say Tooth Fairy 2, just Tooth Fairy, the root of evil which doesn't help us know that we're watching a sequel. A group of friends who apparently haven't even seen each other since high school are reuniting at an out-of-the-way British farmhouse. They've been apart so long, no one knows what anyone else is doing for a living. Let's run down the characters. So, we have British Blues Clues, who is insane. We have Chelsea Clinton and the aforementioned nose job from Dr. Carver. We also get to enjoy budget Andrew Tate and dollar store Simon Pegg. Don't forget random blonde chick and friend zone. Their plan for the weekend included drinking, poker, and lounging awkwardly on the bed. Or friend zone. Blue's Clue starts freaking out. Again. And having visions of pulling out his teeth and then passes out. But it's okay because Chelsea Clinton is there to comfort him. Fake Daddy Tate has... Don't say it. A book. Always a friggin' book. With incantations so they can have a seance and freak everybody out, I guess. His real plan was to kidnap Blue's Clues and terrorize him because we found out he's apparently the main character in the first movie and Andrew Fake Tate knew someone who died. Fake Daddy Tate's cousin dresses up like the Tooth Fairy and scares Blue's Clues. But oh no! The real demonic Tooth Fairy shows up and starts killing everyone. The Tooth Fairy can create fake people decoys to lure someone from one location to another, which she does as she kills people. I guess she just wants to cause some confusion. It works. I'm very confused. Chelsea Clinton discovers a tree full of candy canes. She hangs them around her neck and the Tooth Fairy can't see her. <sighs> yep. They realize they have to summon another demon to come drag the Tooth Fairy back to hell. They win! We cut to a few months later and Chelsea Clinton and Blue's Clues are sleeping the afternoon away when Blue's Clues goes crazy and takes the trouble to one, find a corded drill, two, plug it in, and three, hide and wait in the bathtub for Chelsea. The end. We didn't mention the audio. The audio is... What's the word? It sucks. The audio sucks. I'm in a pain. Ow. Mm. This really hurts. Well, 
Do you want me to pull it out? I don't know. Maybe I'll just break down and go to the... Roll credits. I don't understand science. Can we punch it? I don't have brains. I have brawn. I can pick it up. Yeah. I can put it down. <laughs> I can pick it up and put it down. What do you want it? <laughs>